Hey guys, I'm Liz. This is my BioLite Alpen Glow 500 Camping Lantern. This is such an interesting light, so here's all the different tests and experiments that I did with this light. You can find everything on the screen here, and let's get straight into the first test right now. First up, we have the unboxing. Okay, not exactly a test, but I know some of you guys like it. I got this Alpen Glow from REI Co-op. Here's what it looks like brand new, and enjoy the unboxing. Now, here's what you get in the box. Here's the lantern itself wrapped in plastic. Here's some warranty info along with a user guide plus a charging cable at the bottom. And this is everything you get out of the box. And here's the first look at the brand new Alpen Glow. It feels honestly really high quality and I can tell that I'm gonna like this lantern. One thing I found very strange here was that this lantern wasn't charged out of the box. Basically, when you press the top button, just one of the battery lights will flash. The lantern will not give you any light at all, and that's when you know that this lantern is flat out. So our first actual test here is going to be charging this lantern. At the back of this open glow, you find two flaps here. The one on the right, it says so even without opening the flap, is a micro USB input. The one on the left is the USB output. To charge this, we gotta use this charging cable. Look for the end with the micro USB, open the right flap at the back of the lantern and plug that into the lantern. Now the other end is just a regular USB which you can plug into any USB port you have at home. Once you do so, the first indicator light will start flashing and this means that it has started charging. One hour and 15 minutes in, the second light will start flashing. Two hours and 15 minutes in, the third light will flash. Three hours and 15 minutes, the fourth light. And when all four lights stop flashing altogether, this means that the Alpen Glow is fully charged. This happens at about five hours for me. I thought this was a bit strange as well because it's only supposed to take three hours to charge, but mine is a solid five hours every single time. Now you may have been wondering what the flap on the left is, and that is the USB output, which looks like this. You can use this to charge either your mobile phone or the BioLite sight lights, which you have to purchase separately, of course. So I've got my charging cable in the Alpen Glow here, and it's also fully charged. I haven't used any of the light modes except to check on the battery level. It was a little annoying that I had to keep turning on the light to check this, but just a minor con here. Now I'm going to plug in my iPhone 12, I'll keep you updated with the screenshots, and I'm starting off with a 19% battery level. Half an hour in, 41% charge. An hour in, 61% charge. This was also when I noticed the lantern dropping from 4 lights to 3. One and a half hours in, 76%. Two hours, 17 minutes in, 99%. After I stopped charging my phone here, I noticed that there were only two lights left. Can this survive another charge? Let's do it again and find out. This time, I'm starting off the second charge at about 31%. Half an hour in, 49%. 50 minutes in, 62%. And only one light left on the Alpen Glow. One and a half hours in, 84%. One hour and 45 minutes in, 92% charge, and this is when the charging stopped completely. I was not able to get any more juice out of the Alpen Glow. Okay, so here are all the results of the mobile phone charging test. Overall, I would say that I got almost two full charges from the Alpen Glow, which is double what I usually get from my other rechargeable lanterns. The Alpen Glow has a capacity of 6400 mAh, which is so far the biggest power bank I've ever had in a rechargeable lantern. Another really good thing that I noticed is that even after the two full chargers of my phone, there was still some leftover battery in the Alpen Glow. I turned it on the dimmest white mode with both sides lighted up and that lasted me an extra six hours of light, which is great, so you never be left stranded without light. Now, there's only one button on this Alpen Glow. This is it at the top, right here. This single button not only turns on and off the lantern, but it also allows you to cycle through a few different light modes. Another feature that helps cycle through the different light modes is the shape control. To activate this shape control, do not go from left to right. What you gotta do is to go from up to down instead, like this, so just take note of that. Now we've got a ton of light modes to get into, so let's go through that right now. This Alpen Glow has four main modes that you can cycle through using just the top button. First, cool mode. Second, warm light mode. Third, single color mode. And fourth, 
multi-color mode. For cycling through the four main modes, you have to do it quickly enough. Each subsequent click has to be within one second. If you hold it at a specific mode for two seconds or more, the next click would be for the lantern to turn off instead of going into the next main mode. So far, here's the four main modes that we've gone through, which is cool, warm, single color, and multicolor. And don't worry, we've still got a lot to go through. Now, if you press and hold the top button, that helps you control a different function in each light mode. Let's take the first main mode, the cool light mode, as an example. If I press and hold it, that controls the brightness of this white light. Notice that it brightens up slowly and then when it hits the max brightness, it will blink twice very rapidly to show you that you're there. If you want it to be a little bit dimmer, release the button first and then press and hold on it again. It will blink twice rapidly as well when you're at the minimum brightness. Same thing with the warm light. Pressing and holding will get you to the max brightness where it blinks or the minimum brightness where it blinks again or you can stop it anywhere in between if you prefer it to not be so dim but not so bright at the same time. Now this open glow also has a memory setting. I'm going to turn it off right now. The last mode is the warm light mode at the dimmest setting. And when I turn it back on, it goes back to the exact same setting that I had on, which is great. Next, we're going to talk about the single color mode. Unfortunately, you can't control the brightness here, but when you press and hold it, it controls the hue or the color of the light instead. It goes through all kinds of different hues like blue, purple, pink, red, yellow, green, and I'm pretty sure I've missed out all the subtle colors in between. And when it gets to a color that you like, just release the top button and it will stay in that single color. So for example, I want a red light for a night light mode so I can just find that particular color and stay in that color. Now, when we get to the fourth main mode, the multicolor mode, this is my favorite multicolor. We've got a very nice dark pink at the top, lighter pink in the middle, and a neon light blue at the bottom. This mode has three different colors that seriously blend so nicely together. And when you press the top button, that also controls the three different hues and they all change color at the same time, which is seriously great, right? So here's a recap of all the different light modes we've gone through so far and these extra functions, so that's mode 5, 6, 7, and 8 here, they're controlled by remember the pressing and holding of the top button. Now here's where the shape control comes in and that controls a totally different set of light modes altogether and I'm going to take you through modes 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 right here. I'll try to make it as simple as possible, I promise. Okay, so here's the cool light mode that you saw before, and when we shake it from top to bottom, we've got cool light, but with directional lighting, so only half the lantern is lighted up. And when we press and hold the top button, that again controls the brightness of this cool light, but on half the lantern. The brightness control is exactly the same as before. On the second warm light mode, when we shake the lantern again, we get a very nice very cozy candle flicker. I think it's a pretty realistic candle flicker if you ask me. Pressing and holding the top button here allows you to control the brightness here again from dim to not so dim. It doesn't ever get too bright because maybe that can be migraine inducing. On the third single color mode, if we shake it again, we get single color automatic cycling. So you don't just get one color, you get all the colors cycled through again and again, which is seriously fun. And if you press and hold the top button, this controls the speed at which the colors automatically cycle through. I'm going to do that right now, and you'll see three different solid colors flash here. There's red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green, I think you get the idea. When you press the button on red, this means that you want a very slow cycling through of the different colors. Yellow is quicker and green is a fast cycling through. I'll try to do a split screen on the video right now and show you the difference between the fast cycling and the slow cycling. On the fourth multicolor mode, when you shake it again, this allows you to get multicolor automatic cycling, which to me is seriously the most awesome mode ever. So you always get three different colors all cycling through and it's just so nice. Pressing and holding on the top button again allows you to control the speed of the cycling. You'll see the same red, yellow, green options right here. And again, I'll try to show you the difference between the fast cycling and the slow cycling.
Now, when you're in this multicolor cycling mode, you can shake it again. And here's a bonus mode that's only available in the Elpen Glow 500 and not the 250. And this is the fireworks mode. This fireworks mode is cute little explosions of different colors of light. You get six different color explosions on one side and another six different color explosions on the other side, which is very, very cool. And again, pressing and holding on the top button allows you to control the speed of the firework explosions. I think the fastest firework explosion is a little bit insane. I don't think it's that nice. I think the slower speed is definitely much nicer. And there we have it, all the different light modes from mode 1 all the way to mode 13. This is what I think it is, which is the bonus fireworks mode. And you know, it's a lot of taken right now, and you don't have to remember everything I said. You can just refer to the user guide provided by BioLite on this. It's a very short, very easy to read guide in case you ever need to refresh your memory. I recommend taking a picture of it and storing it in your phone so that you don't have to fumble around an insane number of light modes when you desperately need light. Now, you may be wondering how long do each of these light modes last, and how much battery does this Elpen Glow use at each time? You can find all the runtime info on the packaging itself. It says here on the box that there's 5 hours on high and a whopping 200 on low. So I turned the Elpen Glow on. This is the first cool light mode, and I had both sides lit on the max brightness. How long did this last? This came in. At drum roll, please. About 5 hours and 20 minutes, which is slightly more than I was expecting. On top of that, I even had 6 hours of leftover power on the dim white light, both sides lit, before the battery went flat. Again, very impressive, and this is the second time that BioLite doesn't leave you stranded with that light. Now, what about the max runtime? Well, of course, I tested that on the minimum brightness and on half the lantern, and the runtime came in at a whopping 203 hours, which is very slightly more than I was expecting. One more thing, if you're wondering what the runtime is when both sides are lighted up on the minimum brightness, that comes in at 148 hours and 30 minutes, not to be specific or anything. And there you have it, all the runtime specs, whether you need it or not. Now, the next feature of this lantern is the battery indicator lights at the bottom of the lantern, right here. I think these are great. It's very easy to tell exactly how many lights are left, and the best thing is that they're pretty accurate. Here's a table of info showing you roughly what I noticed during my testing. Since 4 lights means 100%, and since 100 divided by 4 is 25, I'm assuming that every drop in light will mean a 25% drop in battery. I thought that the first and second lights were pretty darn accurate, but the third one is just a tad bit off. But overall, I think it's fine. It's quite a bit better than most lanterns that I have. The next test is the lumen output of this BioLight. Again, you can find all the info on the box itself. It says here that the max lumens is 500 lumens and the minimum lumens is 5 lumens. To test this, I'm going to need the lantern, of course, plus a few other testing tools. Now I'm going to get the open glow on its max brightness. Notice that it blinks here and keep an eye on the lux meter here. I got a reading of about 690 lumens when it's completely parallel to the lantern and when I tilt it away to show you the reading, the reading will drop quite a bit. Next I'm going to dim the open glow to a minimum brightness. Notice that it blinks here again. Keep an eye on the lux meter again. I've got it pegged at about a 7 lumen output and I'm going to turn it towards you now. So here's a quick table of info comparing the official specs to my tested results of the max and minimum brightness. The minimum brightness is pretty accurate, the max brightness not so much, but I guess that's a good thing since it's a lot brighter, right? Now I'm going to find out the exact shine distance that this lantern can throw its light, and that's basically the shine distance. That's the Alpen Glow sitting on my tripod, looking all bright and all. This is the max brightness, so the 690 lumen brightness that you saw just a minute ago in the previous test. Now here's the Alpen Glow up close on the max brightness. That's my Lux meter again, showing a reading of 600 plus lumens. I'm going to slowly back away from the lantern, and notice that the lumen count drops quite a bit the further we get away from the lantern. It keeps dropping all the way down to 3, 2, one and a final step away, we have a zero lumen count here. Here's the distance from myself to the lantern. I measured that distance in footsteps, which came in at about 12 and a half of my footsteps, or about 129 inches, or about 10.8 feet 
or about 3.3 meters. That is a very decent shine distance. Now, what does this all mean when it comes to tent camping? Well, let's take my Coleman 6 Prison Sundrum tent as an example. That has a length of 9.7 feet and a width of 9.6 feet. And since the Alpen Glow has a shine distance of 10.8 feet in every direction on its max brightness, it can light up an entire six-person tent still with room to spare. Let me show you exactly what I mean. This is the max brightness on the cool white mode hanging at the top of my sundown. And take a look, it lights up the entire base area of the tent. Now what about the dimmest cool white mode though? Let me dim it down a little bit, check it out. It's a lot dimmer for sure and it doesn't actually really light up anything at all. And just in case you want extra info, here's the dimmest warm light mode. And here's the brightest warm light mode if you prefer to use that over the cool light mode. I know that I do, it's a lot better for your eyes at night. I also decided to test the lumen output for the warm light for all of you guys that like that light mode instead. And here's all the relevant info that you may need. BioLite didn't give this info anywhere, so I thought it might be useful for you guys to have it, just in case. The warm light is a little less bright than the cool mode, but it's still very impressive either way. I felt that both light modes on the max brightness were bright enough to do loads of stuff like read a book or play cards as well. Here's me sitting at the edge of my tent and trying to read a book on the different modes. This is the brightest warm mode. Next up, I'll show you the brightest cool mode. This is a close-up of my book on the brightest white mode, and this is a close-up of my book on the brightest warm mode. Now, for the dimmest modes, it's best to use those as a night light. This is the dimmest warm light right here, and this is the dimmest cool mode. And this is the close-up of my book on the dimmest warm mode, and the close-up of the dimmest white mode. You can't see anything at all. For my night light mode, I especially like the warm candle flicker mode, and this is what it looks like. By comparison, this is the Alpen Glow on the brightest white light. It's way too bright for chilling and definitely doesn't feel as cozy for sure. I did think that the directional white light here was great where the lantern faces away from you and it doesn't feel so glaring even on the brightest mode. Now, from the outside of the tent, here's what everything looks like. The first mode that I'm going to show you here is the brightest white mode. And notice how it spilled out of the tent because there's more than enough light for this entire tent. That's the benefit of the longer shine distance. I'm going to dim that down and notice that this is the dimmest white. This is the dimmest warm, and this is the brightest warm. Again, it spills out of the tent as well. After that, we have all these different colors, as you can see here, and it's very unique to have all these different colors in a tent. I thought that the number of light colors on this lantern were superb. I could literally pick from any color of the rainbow and more. And the fireworks too, of course. And even the brightest outputs weren't too harsh on your eyes because the frosting of the lantern is really high quality as well. Very few lanterns have frosting to this quality. Remember how I said the shine radius of this lantern is really good? That's because of the frosted glow. It helps to diffuse the light really well and spreads the light out very nicely. And there are two more modes I haven't talked about yet, and one of them is the low power mode. When the lantern is in critically low battery, it will flash four times. After that, only the dimmest cool or white light will be available, and only for one hour. After that, you've got to recharge it. Also, when I was uh, charging this lantern, I noticed that only the first two modes, the cool white and the warm white mode, were available. The other colors were not available. The first time I charged this out of the box, I thought my lantern was broken, and I really wanted the colorful modes. So I quickly submitted my warranty info online and shot a quick email over to the BioLite support team. And guess what? They got back to me within just one working day, asking for more info on the Alpen Glow, and they helped me figure out exactly what went wrong with it. I think this is a pretty quick response, although the warranty period is only one year, and I would have liked it to be longer for sure. You do get lifetime support though, so I guess that's something. The other mode I haven't gone through yet is the lock mode. You see, to turn on this lantern, all you gotta do is to tap the top button once and very quickly. The problem here is that when you dump it into your bag, it can knock against something and turn the light on, draining your entire battery during transport. It's happened to me before. That's why it's super important for this lantern to have the lock mode. To do so, just press and hold on the top button for 8 seconds. After that, the light will flash twice and then go off. This means that it's locked. When you try to turn it on, it'll just flash twice and turn off. To get this out of lock mode, just do the exact same thing. Press and hold the button for another 8 seconds. 
Now it'll flash once, and that means it's unlocked and you can cycle through all the different light modes again. Another feature is the hook at the bottom of the lantern. To stow this away, you can either stow it to the left or to the right. It's kind of useful for carrying it around like this with two fingers, but it's the most useful for hanging at the top of the tent for top-down light all throughout your entire tent. Now this open glow has an IPX4 rating, you can find this on the packaging again, and this means that this lantern is splash proof. It cannot be submerged, but it is resistant to splashes of water, so if you leave it out in light to moderate rain, it should be perfectly fine. As for heavy rain, this is where I decided to test this lantern. I put it through about 15 to 30 minutes of heavy rain, here are some shots from my heavy rain test, and basically I gave the Alpen Glow a pretty good drenching down from almost every angle, as you can see here. After the test, I tried out the lantern again, and it's still working perfectly fine in tip-top condition. What about the ports though? Well, after I opened both of them up, I noticed that there was some water on top of one of the ports, the one on the left here. That's why it has only an IPX4 rating, and not something like IPX6 or 7 where it can be submerged, because the seal on the ports isn't tight enough to prevent a lot of water from getting in. There wasn't anything on the drop proof fitness of this lantern, so I just decided to drop test this from about my hand height. So far, so good, and it's holding up well without a single scratch at all, and I only noticed a little bit of dirt stuck to the bottom, that's all. As for portability, I'm gonna first look at the weight of this lantern, and that comes in at about 14.5 ounces, which is about 412 grams. As for the pack size, that measures about 3.6 inches, by 3.6 inches at the top and about 5.4 inches in length. To convert that, that's about 9.1 by 9.1 centimeters at the top and about 13.7 centimeters in length. Now, for pros, there are just so many of them. The first one is that this Open Glow has the biggest internal battery of any rechargeable lantern I have. Here are some other big capacity lanterns too, and the Open Glow blows them all out of the water. This was also the only lantern that I could get almost two full charges of my mobile phone, the rest were only one plus times. On top of that, the frosted globe on this Alpen Globe was so high quality that it gave me a very impressive shine radius, more than enough to light up an entire six person tent. And this can even light up up to an eight person tent. There's only one rechargeable lantern I have that can beat this Alpen Globe, and that's the Gong Zero Lighthouse 600. Well, that's mainly because the lumen output is a lot higher, so that's why the shine radius is also a lot longer. In fact, here's the kicker. The lighthouse has 50% more lumens than the Alpen Glow, but throws its light only 20% more than the Alpen Glow. The rest of my rechargeable lanterns couldn't even touch these two lanterns here, so we don't need to talk about those. I also really love that there's not just a functional cool light, but a very cozy nighttime warm light as well. So many of my lanterns only come with one color, so that's either a cool light, a warm light, or somewhere in between. There usually isn't an option to go from cool to warm or vice versa. Take my LED lantern ML6 as an example. I bought the regular cool white version, which also has a red light mode, which is nice, but it doesn't have a warm light mode at all. To get to the warm mode, you gotta specifically buy the ML6 warm, which comes with a warm light, but no cool light. The Open Glow, on the other hand, gives you the best of both worlds. And of course, it beats all my other lanterns in the colorful modes as well, with every color of the rainbow and more, and even this super neat fireworks mode. You're literally spoiled for choice here. The run times on this Alpen Glow are also very accurate and very decent as well, with everything you need to know up on the screen here in this neat little table, just in case you skip past that test in this video. I also love how I have complete control over the lumen output, going all the way from just a mere 7 lumens to a whopping 690 lumens, and I can stop anywhere in between. Complete control in the cool white and warm light modes, it's really great. I would have liked to be able to control the brightness in the colorful modes as well, but you can't do that, and the brightness you see on the screen here is the only brightness you can have. But I would say that it's not too big an issue overall. There are two main cons I can think of there. One is that the warranty is super short, just one year, and this is the shortest warranty I have when it comes to my lanterns. And the second con is that despite all the cool functions, like the multicolor cycling on the screen here, there isn't like an emergency strobe or pulse light that you can use to call for help. 
Because of that, this is no survival lantern that you should use for venturing into the wild. It's more of a fun party lantern that you can bring along while car camping at established campsites. As for myself, because of all the light modes, I've actually been using it at home and every single day at that because I love the colorful modes so much, which made it such a worthwhile purchase. Is this the best rechargeable LED lantern out there though? Or is there a better one that suits your needs? Spoiler alert, I do love my Alpen Glow, but it doesn't perform the best. It's close, but not quite. Click on this video on the screen to find out which is the overall best one. Maybe that might suit you better.